Good morning. I should also say he is risen. He is risen Easter is a season, not just a day. <laughs> I want to welcome all of you here. Praise God for your faithfulness and especially for God's faithfulness in this beautiful day. Uh, a lot of good things happening here. We welcome those who are joining us online as well. Our friend Denver Bierman is back with us today. And we celebrate his, his gift of music. Uh, thank you, Denver. We look forward to it. We will have communion this morning. Reminder that uh, we observe an open table. What that means is you don't have to be a member of this church. As long as you believe in, in Christ and what he has done for you on the cross, you are welcome to commune uh, at our table. We will have four stations, two on each side, and the little discard buckets are in the pews for the, uh, the little shot glasses. Um, <laughs> revealing something of my past, I guess. <laughs> oh. I feel it, I feel it. Please give your attention to the announcements in the bulletin. Uh, there's an upcoming new members class. Um, our class after the worship service will meet in here. Um, go get coffee and a, a donut if you wish and, and join us back in here for that. We're going to be talking about the movie Risen and we've got film clips from that movie. It talks about what happened after the resurrection and there's some, some good stuff in there that I think will bless you. You're here. God's here. We thank God. We praise God. And we worship God. Would you stand as you are able? Sisters and brothers, gather in the presence of the risen Lord. With open hearts, we come before the risen Christ. 
hear the glorious Easter news of love and grace. Even in our doubts, we seek the Savior's love and life. May our doubts be transformed into faith. Fill us with your spirit now and forever. Hymn number 310, He Lives. seated. It's hard to talk after that. Our scripture today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 and 20. This is from Eugene Peterson's paraphrase, The Message. Later on that day, the disciples had gathered together, but fearful of the Jews, they had locked all the doors in the house. Jesus entered, stood among them, and said, Peace unto you. Then he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples, seeing the master with their own eyes, were awestruck. Jesus repeated his greeting. Peace to you, just as the Father sent me, I send you.
Today we continue our Easter celebration, a celebration of the greatest news that has ever been heard and proclaimed in all of earth. All of history, the glorious news of Easter. Easter's news. It's news that has changed lives. You know, it changed the Mary's lives who first went to the tomb and found that it was empty. It's news that changed the lives of Christ's followers, disciples. It's news that has changed this world. But as we celebrate this news, Easter's news, we, we still wrestle with, we wonder, is this just news? Or is it news that has impact and meaning upon our lives here and now? Now, this is the question we're wrestling with this Easter season. Is it just news or is it more than just news for you and me? And to help us wrestle with that question, I, I want us and we're taking a look at some of the conversations that the resurrected Christ had. And, and I believe we can take all these conversations, we can boil them down into two word sound bites. And we are soundbite people, are we not? Every return, we are bombarded by sound bites because that's kind of what our attention span can take, right? Sound bites here and there. And last week, we heard the first of those sound bites, the sound bite where the resurrected Christ says to the Marys, Fear not. Fear not. The tomb stands empty. There is no need to fear, no need to even fear death, for I have overcome it. And today we come to today's soundbite from the Gospel of John in the 20th chapter. And I, I encourage you today, sometime between now and the time you go to sleep tonight, pull out your own Bible and read the entire chapter of the Gospel of John. Read the entire Gospel. You know, Rick just shared just two short verses out of that chapter. So take time to, to read the entire chapter. But in, in this chapter... We find that the disciples are in a room. The doors are locked because, yes, they heard from the Marys, Jesus saying, fear not, but they don't quite really understand it yet, and they're afraid. They have witnessed what happened to their teacher, and they're afraid that they might be next. And so there in this locked room, and all of a sudden, Jesus is standing there amongst them, the resurrected Christ. They, they can see him with their own eyes. They can hear him with their own ears. And everything changes in that moment for them. In that moment, their lives are forever changed. They're filled with joy. They're filled with peace. They're filled with a reassurance. They're filled with love. They're filled with abundance and blessedness of life. They're filled with an eternity of life. In that moment, Easter's news becomes more than just news for them, but it becomes the very good news in their life. But there's a problem. There's a problem. Thomas, one of the disciples, is not there. We don't know why he's not there. I, I kind of have my own theories. My theory is he ran down to the convenience store to pick up some snacks and some Slurpees for all of the disciples to snack on. Or maybe, maybe he just needed to get away from everybody else and just needed a little alone time. Or maybe he just needed some fresh air. We don't know. All we know is Thomas is not there. And he comes back to the room and he gives the secret door knock so the disciples know who's on the other side. And the disciples open the door. And immediately Thomas knows something has changed. Something is different about his friends. There's something different there in that room from before he left. And before he's even in the room, his friends are bombarding him, saying, you can't believe what happened. You missed it. And they start telling him about what had happened, and, and Thomas gets this sick feeling in his stomach. His blood pressure begins to rise. 
And he gets to that breaking point and he says to his fellow friends, his fellow disciples, stop it. Stop it. I thought you were my friends. Why are you trying to pull a quick one on me? Why are you trying to fool me? Heck, Thomas may have been the very first person to say, I was born at night, but not last night. You know, see, Thomas, he had witnessed what had taken place. They had, he had watched as they had taken his teacher and nailed him to a cross. They, he, he had witnessed how, how he breathed his very last breath. He watched as they took down his lifeless body. He watched as they laid that body in a tomb and sealed it. And now he has to say to his disciples, stop it. Stop with this resurrection thing. I know what I saw. It's over. It's, it's done. And then maybe, maybe out of a sense of frustration or disappointment or anger, he, he says those words that we all have heard in the scriptures before. Unless I put my fingers in the nail marks in his hands, I will not believe. I will not believe. Now, I don't think we should blame Thomas. I don't think we should blame Thomas. In fact, we are Thomas, are we not? I, I know I stand beside Thomas a great deal of the time. We all question. We all have doubts in our lives. We really shouldn't blame Thomas. I mean, after all, yeah, he, he heard the first Easter sound by the fear not, but, but fear not was not enough for him yet. He didn't quite fully understand it. He for, for him, Easter's news was just that news. But a week later, a week later, the disciples are gathered together, and this time Thomas is with them. And the resurrected Christ appears again. And in this second appearing, Jesus gives us our second Easter soundbite. For he looks at Thomas and he says, touch me, touch me. As we continue our Easter celebration, as we continue to celebrate and glorify and proclaim Easter's news, may we hear the resurrected Christ saying to each of us today, touch me, touch me. God, we thank you so much for the Easter story. Uh, I love these old hymns that we uh, sing. Uh, and uh, this next one's so appropriate. What could wash away my sin? What could make me whole again? I love that there's an answer to that question. Um, and it's absolutely nothing but the precious blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And all oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my part in this I see Nothing but the blood of Jesus For my cleansing this my plea Nothing but the blood of Jesus And oh precious is the flow That makes me white as snow No 
other fount I know Nothing but the blood of Jesus This is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And this is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And oh, precious is the blood that makes me white as snow. But the blood of Jesus, nothing but the blood of Jesus, nothing but the blood of Thank you, Denver. I know we're going to hear more from you, too. Will you join me in our unison prayer? From a sealed tomb, good news of resurrection breaks forth. Lord, grant us the wisdom to know the depth of Easter's news, that it isn't just a historical event, but a life-transforming reality. Like the disciples behind locked doors, may we open ourselves to the presence of the risen Christ, allowing his peace and joy to fill our hearts in the places of our lives that we are like Thomas, filled with doubt. Enable us to trust in the promise of Easter's news. Enable us, O oh Lord, to know the assurance of your love and promise of new life. As we continue our Easter celebration, may we be transformed by the power of the empty tomb and filled with life to the fullest. We seek this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and we join our voices together to pray as he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Come thou fount of every blessing Tune my heart to sing thy grace Streams of mercy never ceasing Offer songs of loudest praise Teach me some melodious song Sung by flaming tongues above Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it Mount of thy redeeming love Grace, how great a debtor, daily I am constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I Praise thee, O Christ, for by your cross you have redeemed the world. We thank you, O God, for the privilege of life and health, for the opportunity to be your people in this place. Accept our gifts for Normandy's work in the world. Bless, guide, and direct us in this week to come, and may we live with open hearts and open hands. In Jesus' name, amen. I, I will confess that my imagination sometimes can be a little out there. But, but for some reason, when it comes to this passage from the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter, I, I've always pictured it kind of like this. I've, I've pictured it as a good old Western movie. And what I picture is... In that old Western movie, you know, the saloon scene. You know, Dave was appropriate with his shot glass <laughs> earlier. So thank you. Thank you for that. I'll pay you off later. <laughs> yeah, but there, there, there's this saloon and there's the piano player. I think it's Andrew playing the piano. There, there, there's a card game going on. It's James, John, Peter, and Bartholomew. Yeah, they're playing cards. I won't say what kind of card game they're playing, but you, you, you know what kind of card game they're playing. 
Philip is the bartender, and he's serving up communion shot glasses, of course. (laughs) But Thomas is bellied up to the bar. He's commiserating. He's drowning in his sorrow. You, You can picture the scene, can't you? You can imagine what's going on. And then there's the sound of some spurs and the swinging doors of the saloon opening and closing. And everyone stops what they do and they turn to see who just walked in. And being a good Western movie, you know, it's somebody dressed in all white with a white cowboy hat on. And it's Jesus. It's the resurrected Christ. And... and, Everyone notices who it is, and then all of a sudden they realize that Jesus, the resurrected Christ, makes eye contact with Thomas sitting at the bar. And instantly, everybody realizes and recalls that just a few days earlier, how Thomas had opened his big mouth and blurted out what he had blurted out. And afraid of what is going to take place, they try to make themselves scarce. The piano music stops. The card game ends. And everybody is taking cover out of fear of what's going to take place. We have a good old Western standoff. That's my imagination. A good old Western standoff between the resurrected Christ and Thomas. You can see it, can't you? You can feel the tension, the the suspense in the moment. Of course, if Hollywood was to really do this scene, you know, Jesus would be being played by, by, by John Wayne or Clint Eastwood. And he would say, make my day. Or beat it, or something along those lines. And of course, then there would be a a cameo by Harrison Ford over in the corner of the saloon, and he'd say, I have a bad feeling about this. (laughs) But that isn't a Hollywood scene. Instead, what really takes place is there in that standoff, Jesus and Thomas are locked eye to eye. And Jesus simply says to Thomas, touch me. Touch me. Two very simple words, but powerful words. Words that I think tell us a great deal today about who Christ is. They are words that speak volumes to us. They they enable us to learn and understand that Jesus does not get mad at us when we have doubt. Jesus does not get mad. Jesus does not seek revenge and restitution when we have doubt. In fact, what we learn is that when we have doubt, Jesus comes to us and says, ask your questions. Seek the truth. Touch me. What the resurrected Christ is saying to us is he does not want you or me or any of us to live life in a haze, but instead he wants us to see clearly. He wants to turn our doubt into faith. He says to us, touch me. You know, throughout the world history, there have been all kinds of people that have demanded blind loyalty from their followers. There have been all kinds of individuals who, who, who refuse questions to be asked that do not want there to be any doubt. But Jesus is not one of these. Jesus does not intimidate us. Jesus does not try to brainwash us. Instead, he says to us, touch me. He tells us to deal with our doubt. And let's face it, we all doubt, do we not? We all have those places, those moments in our lives that we have questions. Or at least I know I do. I'll be honest with you, I I have doubts. I I question sometimes on 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 a regular basis. You know, can I be who I am? Can I do what I do? Can I be faithful to God's calling upon my life? We all have questions. We all have doubts. And that's why it's so important for you and for me to hear today's Easter soundbite of touch me. 
A soundbite that says, if you have questions, if you have doubt, reach out and touch me. You see, when it comes to that doubt, when it comes to those questions in our lives, we, we can't ignore it. We, we can't pretend it's not there. We can't pretend to just sweep it under the rug and, and turn and run away from it. We have to deal with it. When it comes to those doubts, those questions, we have to deal with it in our lives. Or how I like to say it is we need to do our homework. We need to do our homework. We, we need to investigate the evidence. We need to read and study the scriptures and allow them to be more than just words on a page. We need to have conversations with others because all of us are dealing with it. We all can, can help each other figure out the solutions to things. We, we need to deal with the question, with the doubts, so that we can come to our own conclusions. A conclusion that says this faith thing is real or a pile of lies. We need to come to our own conclusions. Is Easter's news just news? Or is it the good news that changes my life? Jesus says to Thomas, touch me. He says, check it out. Examine the facts. Do your investigative work. Do your homework. And come to your own conclusions. And this is exactly what Thomas does. He does his homework. He examines the evidence. And he comes to the one and only conclusion that you can come to when you do such homework. For when we do that homework, when it comes to the resurrected Christ, we can only come to one conclusion. And Peter comes to that conclusion and he falls to his knees and he boldly proclaims, My master, my God, my master, my God. I, I, I have a feeling most of you, if not all of you, probably have heard of or even read some books from the best-selling Christian author, Lee Strobel. What you might not know about Lee Strobel is that he used to be a very staunch atheist. A very, very staunch atheist. In fact, earlier in his life, Lee Strobel was a, a hard-nosed investigative legal reporter. He has a law degree from Yale. He knows how to investigate things and how to, to report on them. Uh, Lee says that throughout all of his life, he always felt this tugging upon his heart when it came to Jesus, but he couldn't believe I kind of believe that maybe he just continually heard Jesus saying to him touch me but then one day Lee came to the conclusion you know I'm going to do what I do I'm going to do my homework I'm going to investigate this Jesus thing and I'm going to investigate the, the resurrection and he set out in his knowledge of how to do that. And he, he looked at the evidence. He examined everything he could. He talked to other people. He read the scriptures. And he came to the one and only conclusion you can come to. Jesus Christ's tomb stands empty. And Lee's life was forever changed. Easter's news went from simply being news to being the good news. The life-giving, life-fulfilling news. And it changed his life forever. In fact, that's what enabled Lee to, to write such books as Case for Christ, Case for Faith. Books that have helped countless others to do their homework, to come to the same conclusion that he came to, the same conclusion that Thomas came to. And you and I, we are like Thomas. Thomas. Because we all have questions, we all have doubts, but we need to do what Lee Strobel did. We need to do our homework. We need to hear Jesus Christ saying to us individually, personally, touch me. Touch me. You know, we ask all kinds of questions. You know, maybe, maybe we have questions or have doubts around, you know, did, did this or did that really happen? 
Do, do I believe this or, or that? Can, can I really truly surrender my life to this Jesus guy? In the midst of all the, the uncertainties of life, can I really truly trust Christ? In the midst of this hardship, this difficult moment in my life, can I really know that it's all going to be okay? We all have questions. We all have doubts. You know, in fact, the easy part is asking the questions. The, the easy part is having the doubt. The hard part is, is moving beyond the pat answers. The hard part is moving beyond the things that we learned in Sunday school when we were children and, and how to answer certain questions. The hard part is moving beyond the, 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 the party line responses that we all are so familiar with. The hard part is doing our own personal homework and coming to our own conclusions so that our doubts can be turned into faith. The, the resurrected Christ says to Thomas, touch me. Touch me. And I believe Christ is saying that to you and to me, to each and every one of us. Because in Easter, he says to us, touch me, do your homework, do your investigation, ask your questions. Because I want my news of the empty tomb of Easter to be the news that changes your life. That's what Christ says to us. Touch me. And so as we continue our Easter celebration, I, I want to ask you, where in your life, where in your life right now do you need to hear the resurrected Christ saying to you, touch me? Where in your life are you dealing with doubts? Where are you being overcome with questions? In fact, maybe, maybe you're well past due from dealing with those doubts, those questions. Maybe, maybe you have spouted off the pat answer for years and you haven't really done your own homework. Where do you need to hear Jesus saying, touch me? So you can come to your own conclusion. So Easter's news might be more than just news for you, but might be the good news that forever changes and transforms your life. You see, when Jesus said to Thomas, touch me, it forever changed his life. When Jesus says, touch me, to all of the faithful followers that have gone before us, it forever transformed their life. I stand here before you to witness to you to say, I have heard Christ say, touch me, and my life has forever been transformed. Easter's news is more than just news. It is news that changes us. It fills us with joy, with hope, with peace, with love, with life. It is news that transforms us and fills us our lives with meaning and significance and purpose. It is news that fills us with life abundant here and now and for all of eternity. And I want all of you, I want all of you to hear the resurrected Christ saying to you in this very moment, Touch me. Touch me. Allow the news of the empty tomb to be more than just news. Allow it to be the good news that breaks forth from a tomb and fills us with life that transforms us. My hope and my prayer is that each and every one of us might be a Thomas. That we might allow ourselves to question, to have doubt, but not to simply remain there, but to search for the answers, to examine the evidence, to allow our doubts to be turned into faith because the resurrected Christ says, if you do your homework honestly, if you honestly search, I will reveal myself to you. In fact, if it is the nail holes in my hands that you need to see, I will show them to you. For touch me. And if we can be like Thomas, 
and we do just that, then we too might fall to our knees and boldly declare, my master, my God, touch me, be filled with life. Amen. sets us free. You're the resurrection, resurrection and life, the Alpha and Omega. Oh, death, where is thy sting? The grave can't contain you. You're the resurrection, the resurrection and life. Every knee shall bow before you. Every tongue shall proclaim, Holy Lord Jesus. You're the resurrection, resurrection and life, all glory, hallelujah. I'm alive and I am free. Jesus victorious is alive in me. Oh God, arise in your new life, living in your true life. Oh, make all things new. And we will rise in your new true life yes you make all things new we have new life in you Jesus we have new life in you Jesus new life in you oh Jesus new life in you new life in
Thank you. Let us pray. Oh Lord, you truly are the resurrection, the life, the blessedness of life. But oh Lord, we admit, we know there are those places, those moments in our lives that we have questions, we have doubts. We are Thomas. And so we pray, oh Lord, as we celebrate the news of Easter, that we might hear you say to us in our hearts and our spirits, touch me, touch me. Investigate, O oh Lord, in our hearts. Show us your hands. Fill us with such hope, such joy, such love, such grace, such life that we might be also Thomas falling to our knees proclaiming, my master, my God. Enable us to know that Easter's news is more than just news, but it is the good news. And oh Lord, we seek this not just for ourselves in this place at this very moment, but we seek this for all of your brothers and sisters around the world. We so long for each and every one of us to know that you are Lord and Savior, that you are the resurrected Christ. For it is in that knowledge that we are able to face the things that take place in this world. Things such as earthquakes that destroy cities and cause mass death, that disrupt life where things like floods taking place that, that ravage the, 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 the lands around us, where there are the wars and turmoils and conflicts where life is not safe, where life is not valued, where there is illness and disease, where there are hardships and brokenness, we need to know that you are the resurrected Christ, O oh Lord, filling us with life. O oh Lord, use us. Use us as your Easter children to proclaim to all the world that you are the one that says to us, touch me. Touch me so that you might know that I am Christ. And so, oh Lord, in this moment, we come to be at your table, a table which you have given to us to embody for us your very body and blood broken and shed for us. As we come to feast at your heavenly banquet this day, O oh Lord, may we come hearing you saying to us, touch me, and in receiving this bread and this juice. May it truly be your body and blood broken and shed for us so that we might know in a very tangible way that you are Christ and that you are the one that nourishes us and feeds us with a hope, a joy, a peace, a love, a fullness of life. Oh Lord, come and be with us at this, your table. For we come as your faithful children, your Easter people. Come, O oh Lord, for I ask this in your holy name. Amen. I invite those that are serving to please come forward.
the table has been prepared. All are invited to come and partake of this holy sacrament, which Christ gives of himself to us in. Come and receive. I invite you to come as the ushers direct you.
Let us pray. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you for this holy mystery, this holy meal which you give yourself to us in. Having received this meal, having partaken of its elements, we receive anew you into our lives, and you fill us with life. We only pray that in that we might be one with you, one with each other and one in the world until your victory comes fully and all of your children know the good news of an empty tomb. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah, there is victory in Jesus' name. Y'all hear the music okay? I can't really hear it. Maybe. Here we go. One more time. Victory in Jesus. Y'all clap your hands with me this morning. Yeah! I hold an early old story, how a Savior came from glory. I heard an old, old story, how a Savior came from glory. How we gained his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. And I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. And then I repented of my sin, won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew Him, and all my love is to Him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about His healing. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how we made the lame to walk again, and he caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew Him, and all my love is to Him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Heard about a mansion that he's built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. And about the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day we'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew Him and all my love is to Him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood.
Thank you, Denver. Two things. If you, have, if you help purchase some of the Easter flowers, please feel free to pick one of those up as you leave the day to take them. If they're, if they're left, we will find homes for them to be planted. Um, but feel free to take those after worship today. Second, Jesus says, touch me. He does not say, look into the solar eclipse tomorrow. <laughs> he says, touch me. And so go forth this day knowing that it is okay to have questions, to have doubts. But don't just stay there. Examine the evidence and hear the resurrected Christ saying to you, touch me. Go forth knowing that it is not just Easter's news, but it is the good news that fills us with life. Go in the resurrected Christ's name. Amen and amen.